Hey there, Sam Millard here from PanhandlePrecision.com. This is going to be a field review of Kestrel's new 5700 Sportsman. If you aren't familiar with the Kestrel line of meters, they are pretty much the gold standard of environmental meters. They read things, uh, environmental conditions that have to do with the weather, uh, like barometric pressure, temperature, humidity, heat index, things like that. From a long range shooting standpoint, we've been using them for years to come up with conditions that we have to enter into our ballistic computers to come up with a firing solution, namely air density. Air density affects the drag on the bullet on its way to the target. The other thing we've been using Kestrel meters for is to read the wind. They have a built-in impeller here on top that will give us an accurate wind speed that we can input into our ballistic calculators. Okay, the thing that sets a Kestrel Sportsman apart from a standard uh, weather meter is the fact that it has a built-in ballistic solver in it. So if you were using a meter before and a ballistic solver, you would normally get your conditions off the meter and then you would input them it separately into a ballistic solver. With the Kestrel Sportsman, it's all built in. And because of that, it's automatically feeding those inputs to the ballistic solver. It uses the Applied Ballistics Ballistic Calculator. Uh, this ballistic calculator is very accurate and has the capability of giving you a firing solution out to 4,000 yards. Okay, the Sportsman will hold three gun profiles. Uh, those profiles, you can build them with a G1 or a G7 ballistic coefficient. You can uh, do muzzle velocity truing with it to, tr to validate your trajectory. It pretty much has the full-blown Applied Ballistics solver in it, uh, with a few exceptions. It is more than enough to make a shot out to the transonic range of the bullet, you know, where the bullet starts to go subsonic. Uh, as far as the hunting, a long range hunting meter, this meter does it very well. It, uh, unlike the old sportsman, it accounts for Coriolis, it accounts for aerodynamic jump, spin drift, those kinds of things that were missing in the first generation of sportsmen. Uh, this meter is, has basically done for me everything that I used the elite meter for as far as long range hunting. This meter showed up I think two days before my daughter and I were on our way to Wyoming to go on an antelope hunt. I put a battery in it, I did a compass calibration on it and set it all up with my preferences. I uploaded three gun profiles from my phone onto it, turned it on, turned on my elite meter and checked them both for a 1500 yard shot with my 300 wind mag. They were identical. Uh, both of them use G7 ballistic coefficients. Uh, both of them use everything that, that I'm concerned with in making a long-range shot. Uh, it's a very, very accurate ballistic solver. I've had no problems with uh, doing trajectory validations with it. I think I've had to adjust my velocity 20 feet per second on average across all of my rifles and all of my loads. Okay, Kestrel meters are tough. They're designed to be out in weather like this, wet, cold. Uh, heat, everything. They are waterproof, they're shockproof, they're just ready to rock. You don't have to worry about hurting your meter. Take it out in the elements, get it wet, get it cold, freeze it, boil it, doesn't really matter. This is a really tough meter and you aren't going to have any problems with it. Now in the 5K series, the 5700 series, they've really improved the screen. The resolution is much better. It's roughly double of what the, the 4K series were. The screen, the material that they use on the, the lens itself on the screen is incredible. Uh, I don't have a single scratch on this meter after three months of hard use. I also have the Elite which is basically the same meter and I've had it for over a year and don't have any scratches on it. It's pretty amazing. So it's a very durable unit. It's light. It's just a little bit over four ounces I think. It runs on one one AA battery. They recommend a lithium battery. I do too. It uh, lasts for a very long time. I think it's rated for 400 hours and I would have to agree with that. It lasts for a very long time. To get to the battery, if you had a 4K series, you knew you had to open up the bottom and then they had a little separator deal that would separate the two AAA batteries. And it was no fun at all. On the 5K series, like on this Sportsman, there's one latch, you pop that latch and this whole door comes off the back. And that one AA battery sits right here. It's very easy to maintain and the battery lasts a very long time. Okay, I keep mine in this TYR case. This is just a real simple Cordura case with a Velcro opening on top. Very easy to get in and out of. Uh, keeps the meter clean and uh, you know safe from any kind of scratches, although boy, that screen's pretty tough. I don't know how it's going to get scratched, but 
anyway it protects the screen it has a way you can either hook it onto a belt somehow or you can hook this into molly webbing uh, it's been a real good case i have the same one for my elite and i've hadn't had any problems at all with it okay this is a link model this is the kestrel's new low energy bluetooth model it uh, will allow it to talk to a lot of different things you can sync it up to a smartphone and and use the weather side of this remotely so you can read weather conditions you can record weather conditions you can run graphs you can come up with all kinds of data on that side on the ballistic side you can slave this to a phone uh, put this in a remote wind vane mount and actually have this give you real-time wind speeds away from your shooting position and you can run everything you need to run right on your phone uh, it's a really good deal I really like the link setup I've had it in that elite 2 for a year uh, it's very handy to have. You can also use the link to up, upload and download gun profiles. Kestrel Sportsman also gives you the ability to shoot with a wind bracket, meaning you can have two different wind speeds entered in it with two distinct corrections for the shot. Uh, typically you'd use that if you have a, a steady low speed wind and then occasionally you have a high gusting wind. You can either average the two out or you can shoot in one condition or the other. It will put both uh, corrections right on the screen for you at the same time. Okay, as a demonstration I set up a 600 yard target with the 260 Terminator. I gave it a wind speed from 3 o'clock, a wind direction from 3 o'clock, and two wind speeds. One for 3 miles per hour, which would be a steady wind. The other one for 8, which would be a gust. When I exit out into my firing solution, it gives me two different corrections. So the wind, I need to dial right on both of them. For a 3 mile an hour wind, I need a half minute of correction. For the 8 mile an hour wind, I need a 2 minute correction. We'll show some screenshots later, but just to go over some of the highlights of the meter, it has a built-in red or white backlight. You don't have to order one or the other anymore. You can toggle between one or the other. Uh, the white backlighting is incredible. You can see it in any condition, bright sunlight, whatever. The thing that I noticed about this meter, though, is that the, the font on the display, on the numbers and the letters and everything, is very, very easy to read, even in direct sunlight. It has a bronze tint to the, to the screen background here that just makes those black letters pop out. So you aren't going to have any problem reading this. Okay, the Ballistic Solver includes a lot of the advanced features that we use to take long range shots like Coriolis, Spin Drift, Aerodynamic Jump. It can be used for all of those things to take really, really long shots, but it's very easy to use to take the short ones too. So if you're hunting, say, with a deer rifle like this 260 with a 10 power scope, you can use it very well for that, for shooting out across the clear cut at five or 600 yards, all the way right up to a full-blown long-range precision rifle to shoot out to a mile. So it's a very good meter for the guy who wants to get started but doesn't want to have all the advanced extreme long-range stuff. For your solutions, you get one target to work with. You can have three different gun profiles loaded onto it at one time. It includes a moving target profile so that you can come up with a solution to shoot moving targets. I think it would be a real ideal PRS type meter as well. Okay, we'll show a few different screens here on the Kestrel Sportsman. Uh, later on I'll have a whole series of how-to videos on setting it up and actually using it. But for now we'll just go through a few screens. This is the power button. When you fire it up that's the startup screen. And it's going to go right into the ballistic screen. Which is just where I leave it because I mostly use it as a ballistic solver. Pushing this button will let you go from ballistics to weather. I leave it set on wind speed because that's what I use it the most for, but you can scroll and show all the other weather features on here. They have user screens. This is a user screen where you can put three different values. There's another one and another one. Okay, let's break out of there. Go back to ballistics. This is your targeting screen. This is where you would do all your targeting information, direction of fire, inclination degrees, or you can use a cosine, target speed, target direction, wind direction, wind speed one, wind speed two. Next one is the wind. This is where you actually change your wind functions. You can do your different directions here. And then this is where you would play with your speeds. 
Next one down is your gun. This is whatever gun you're using at the time. It's set up for a 260 Terminator. This is the environment screen. This shows you all the, the, the conditions that you're shooting in that the meter is reading automatically. You update it by scrolling back and forth. When you turn it on to update, it's reading real live data. When you turn it off, it doesn't move at all. So if you're in the sun or something like that, it won't heat up the sensor. This is your latitude for shooting Coriolis corrections. Temperature, station pressure, relative humidity. This is a density altitude number. Spin drift is on. You can turn it off if you want. That's it for that screen. Next one is the ballistic screen. This shows you basically what the shot's going to be. So it's a 600 yards. We need a 9.97 minutes up, elevation up, wind direction 1, wind speed 2. This is the lead for a moving target. This is the remaining velocity at 600 yards, remaining energy at 600 yards. And this is the range that that bullet goes transonic under these conditions. This is your managed guns. This is where it shows the three different gun profiles you can store in this. You can turn them on and off so that you don't accidentally have the wrong one turned on when you're making a shot. I just leave them turned on and that's it for that screen. Okay, let's show you some of the display options. Okay, you can, you can set your display preferences in the display screen. You scroll down to it, there's display. It has an auto shutdown feature. So you can set it for off, meaning it'll stay on forever as long as the, the power is turned on, or it automatically shuts off in 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45, or an hour. This is a contrast. You can adjust this. I've played around with this quite a bit on the Sportsman and the Elite, and I found 10 to be perfect. This is your backlight. So right now it's turned on to white. You can just turn it on to red whenever you want and back. So now what I'll do is I'll shut the lights off and show you what those two screens look like. Okay, it's set on white right now, so we're going to exit out. This is the targeting screen. It'll take a second for the camera to adjust for it, but that's what the white light looks like. So I can back out of here, go back down to my display, scroll to red, and that's what the, the red, this is the night vision screen basically. Back out, this is what the targeting screen looks like with red. Okay, if you had the old 4K series Sportsman, I'm going to go over a few differences between that one and the 5700. Uh, first of all, this is a completely different meter. It, uh, the screen itself is different. The, you know, the resolution in the screen is roughly twice that of the old 4K. It's a little bit bigger. It's much easier to see. The background is, has that bronze tint to it that really makes those black letters stand out. The material that they use is some kind of a ballistic lens material that doesn't scratch easily. I've had two of these meters now, one for over a year, and it has no scratches on it whatsoever. Uh, the other difference is you can either get a red and a white background in the meter anytime you want. You don't have to order it one way or the other. It has nine keys on the keypad now instead of eight. They're a little bit easier to navigate. They make a little more sense to me at least. Uh, the processor is much faster. The memory is hugely better and bigger than the old 4K series. It's just a better meter all around. Alright guys, that does it for my review of the Kestrel Sportsman. Uh, I think you'll really like this meter if you get one. You know, it's got a lot of value, a lot of performance built into it. You have an environmental meter, you have wind reading capability, and you have a top of the line ballistic solver. It doesn't get much better than that. I appreciate you spending the time watching my videos. Look for some how-to videos coming out on the Kestrel Sportsman soon. Until then, thanks for watching.